so as I mentioned, now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we applied some neural net methods and some other AI techniques in our own work. So this is joint work with one of my students, Heis Overmore, and his advisor, Wilhelmine Van Dolen at the University of Amsterdam, uh, as well as Masood Mazloum, who's also at the University of Amsterdam. And in this particular case, we were looking at um, Instagram data. Right. And the opportunity that was presented to us is that social media are becoming more important for achieving key objectives. People keep using them to kind of promote their brands. Right. But as more content gets out there, it becomes more challenging as a brand to really stick out. On the other hand, we know that the visual content that's available has two to three times as much engagement with users as just uh, written content. So can we create a tool that will help brand managers identify the best visual content to put out there for their brand? And we built this uh, tool on a number of different theories from uh, the marketing literature. In fact, there's a bunch of aspect on things like arousal that drives from some of the work by Jonah Berger and colleagues, right? The interactivity about how you uh, can interact. It's more, you can look around the picture, you can take it in more in more spaces. Uh, there's some work on positivity, right? That seems to really influence consumer engagement and the media persuasiveness. But almost all of that work was focused on a textual context, right? So when I was talking about interactivity, I was talking about the fact that you, you are interacting with the text, right? But in reality, right now, we'd be interacting with an image and that might be different. But we could see how those same kind of aspects might play a role with consumer engagement in this space. Uh, visual social media engagement by consumers is likely influenced by visual complexity, right? We know that the complexity of the image affects how well the consumer engages with the image. Uh, but there's a contradiction in the literature here. There's some literature that seems to say that simple images are easier to engage with, while there's other literature that seems to say that more complex images are easier to engage with and actually increase engagement, right? So what is uh, the answer to this solution? This is what we wanted to explore. So we decided to build upon, automate, and expand a framework presented by uh, Peters, Weddell, and Batra, where they kind of looked at how visual complexity affected uh, consumer engagement with a couple of, uh, of a few number of images, and we decided to apply it to a huge number of images uh, and to automate the process. In their case, a lot of the, the aspects of it were manually done or manually encoded in the system, right? Um, so we wanted to build a tool that would allow you to do this automatically. And our framework relies upon kind of taking the image and analyzing it through two perspectives. One perspective is by looking at the color, luminance, and edges of the image. And another perspective looked at things like the objects and the clutter. And we call the first feature complexity because they're kind of the features of the image, the way the image looks and kind of appears. And design complexity because these are the things of the way you design the image, right? As you take the image, you kind of take it in such a way that has certain objects in the image and certain objects not in the image, right? Um, and visual complexity itself can be broadly defined as the level of detail or intricacy contained within an image, right? And it's been suggested that perceived complexity could correlates positively with the amount of variety in the picture, um, and that it corresponds to a degree of difficult people showing describing a visual stimulus. So how complex the image is is important when understanding how people process the image is what we're trying to say. Feature complexity in particular deals with this detail and variation in three basic visual features, the color, luminance, and edges. Uh, and I'm going to go through how we looked at each of those in particular. So for instance, for color, right, what we did was we looked at the actual distribution of the underlying colors in the space. And this is kind of a mapping to um, the actual um, distribution of that space, right? So we took an image and we picked out like how many pixels are of, of red of this intensity are there? How many pixels of red at this intensity are there? There's a lot more, right? And so we took that and we looked at an entropy measure of those three different uh, color spectra, right? And that kind of gave us a way to capture the complexity of the overall image because if an image has high complexity, right, then it's going to have a lot of variation. Whereas if it has low complexity, right, it's not going to have a lot of variation in it, right? It's all concentrated around one area. This image, you know, it might look like this graph is flatter, but it has a lot more peaks in it than this image does, right, than this graph does, right? And you can kind of see that in the image. This is a simpler image. There's a lot, well, there's a lot more complexity in this image in terms of what colors are being emphasized. So another aspect we looked at was luminance, right? 
And luminance is um, how luminant the object is overall, how much variation there is in the brightness, essentially, of the object, right? And so here's an image that has a very low level of luminance, right? And you can kind of see it better in the black and white, right? They're pretty much all the same. There's some variation between maybe the background and the white cup and the foreground, but it's not a lot. Whereas this one has a very intense spot here, but then has some very dark spots in different areas, right? And so that as a result shows you that it has a much higher luminance complexity, right? Um, and for each of these, I should mention, we made a hypothesis as to whether these will affect uh, um, uh, consumer engagement. And in both cases, we're hypothesizing that there's a U-shaped relationship. In other words, too little color complexity will not engage the user, but too much color complexity will also not engage the user. And really there's some peak in the middle. And we, we argue for the same for luminance, right? And then we're gonna argue the same for um, edge density. So edge density is just how many edges are there in the picture? And this kind of tells you kind of in some respects how many, how many different lines there are going through the image. And the more dense the edges, the more complex the images in general, right? And so if the edge density is high, right, as this image is because it has all these trees and all this lake and everything like that, um, then it's gonna take a longer time for uh, you to process that image in many respects, right? Whereas here's an image that is very low density, it's got a lot of flat surfaces, so it's more easily processed right away. Design complexity, we um, thought of as being the amount of objects and the clutter of the objects in the picture that you're taking. Uh, so in this case, we're actually using a neural net that's going through and it's processing each of the images and trying to identify how many objects there are in the image. And then we're going to use a tool, uh, a, um, a, a similarity tool that's going to tell us how similar the words are. Right, so this is the number of objects in the image, and this is the average, the similarity score of those objects, right? Uh, and so it tells us, or sorry, this is the result of the dissimilarity calculation. So it tells us how dissimilar the objects are together, right? And if we multiply these two together, we kind of get a number of the unique objects that are in the image. In this case, it's not many unique objects, right? If you look at what, it, what the neural net detected in the image, it detected resort, hotel, resort, Sun deck, ocean front, sunbather, outrigger weight, water jump, right? So many of these words are very similar to each other. So here's an object on the left that has a very low amount of design complexity. The, the neural net only picks up like four objects in it, right? And here's an object on the right that has a higher amount. Now, some of those words are similar to each other and we take care of that, but the overall quantity of objects in this space is very high. Notice, by the way, this is kind of an interesting aspect, uh, the neural net's not smart enough to pick up the fact that the Eiffel Tower is behind this uh, I, I tree, and maybe that's because it's just kind of fading into the back there. So clutter can also have a negative influence on consumer engagement. So in many of these cases, we hypothesize that the that there's an inverted U relationship, right? So for instance, that um, that um, uh, they will start out that there will be a, a kind of a Goldilocks spot where you get the most engagement. Um, we did it for design complexity, we argue for a full positive effect. And this may be because we never see an object, uh, an image that just has way too many objects in it, right? Uh, but in general, what we, what we hypothesize is that the more objects you get, the more consumers will engage with it. For design complexity, we argue the opposite, right? That the more objects that you have, they're kind of cluttering up the image, uh, the harder it will be for the user to process it. Now, clutter is an interesting number. It's not literally the amount of like edges in the object or anything like that that's captured by some of the other aspects of what we're looking at. Instead, it's kind of like how organized those objects are. And so this object, this is a great example. The Mad Max poster has a lot of lines in it, right? But they're almost all straight up and down or at right angles to each other and not really overlapping and they're not really kind of interfering with each other at all, right? Whereas the, um, the boardroom meeting here, they're kind of, all the lines are overlapping, they're at different angles from each other. It, may, it takes you a lot longer to try and process exactly what's going on in that image. 